Hallelujah. You are welcome. I believe that you are blessed. If you're joining me for the first time, you are welcome. My message today is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 6. I'll read. It says here, And to the angel of the church inside is right. These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. They are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I'll come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I'll come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I'll confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for bringing us here today yet again to study your letter to us, to the churches, God. And I praise you, God, that even as we study, you are going to touch each and every one of us listening. I praise you, Father God, for your love for us. Be glorified in all that concerns us, in our homes, in our children, in our churches, in our nation, God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, the word of God starts here in verse 1 with Jesus announcing that he is the head of the church. He is all power and authority over his church. And we are his servants. We are his children. Hallelujah. The church of Sardis received a severe rebuke from the Lord. It says in verse 2, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Sardis had gained a reputation. It had a name, a respectable name. Sardis was a church that was spiritually dead. It was in decay. Sadis was a church that the devil was not afraid of. It was not afraid of his actions. It was not afraid of its activities. Sadis did not know what it was, what type of church it was. There was no godliness within it. It was not hosting the presence of God. It had no power. Sunday worship was dead. The souls of the congregation was dead. The preaching was not of God. And they were just continuing in this path of religion. The, the Lord comes in and gives them a rebuke. Saying, Sadis, come on now. Time to wake up. Time to wake up. You have a reputation of being alive. Everything within you appears as though you are full of life, full of vigor. And yet you are dead. Your meetings, your public events, your prayer groups and so on that you're doing is all dead. You are a hypocrite. Wake up, Sadis. Wake up, children of God. Wake up, church. Wake up, Caroline. It's interesting how most times we gravitate towards churches that appears to be doing outwardly so well, to be so organized. It has a name, so we troop into it. And yet here the Lord is saying, Sadis, you are a dead church. In fact, you don't have any conflict within you. You don't have any conflicts outside of you because the devil is not afraid of you. You don't have any persecution within you because Satan is not bothered by your actions. I can't even encourage you to persevere because... You're not under attack of any false teaching. Satan is unbothered by the church of Sardis. Does that ring a bell, somebody? When we think about the churches in the third world countries where members are set alight, buildings are burnt down, pastors are pulled out of their homes and shot point blank in front of their children. 
when we think about studies, does that really bring to mind the spiritual condition of our churches? The spiritual condition of our own personal lives? I pray that as we delve into this word, we're going to be quickened spiritually from sleep, spiritual sleep, spiritual deadness, and awaken to the truth of what Jesus is speaking over us today. Hallelujah, somebody. In verse 2, Jesus is talking to us saying, strengthen the things which remain. They are ready to die. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. There's so much in you, but everything that is within you is about to die. Strengthen what you have within you. It's ready to die. Stop doing things the same way you've done the past month, the last years, because these things within you are about to die. The things that are inactive, they've been idle. They're about to die. Sadis was in such a bad condition, but yet Jesus is saying, all hope is not lost. There is still some light within you. There are still some spiritual things that remain. And Jesus is saying he's not about to give up on Sadis. In fact, he's not given up on his church. He's not given up on you, nor has he given up on me. He's calling us this morning to be watchful, to strengthen those things which are about to die. Perhaps you've been called to, to praise God, to worship God, but yet you've just put that away, put that aside in search for the things of the world. Perhaps a job has come in and taken over your life. Perhaps you've been called to be a youth worker. You've just left that skill, that gift dormant. You've been called to teach. You've been putting it off for a long time. Not this time. Maybe next year I'll step into church again and I'll start. Wake up, the Lord is saying. Wake up because those gifts, those things that you put away is about to die. There is still hope for those gifts to be fanned into flame. If you wake up and strengthen them, we are to wake up. Our enemy, the devil, is roaming around, waiting for whom he may devour, if you're not watchful. That seed, that thing that has been given to you, if you do not watch the enemy, that's the one thing connecting you to, to your spiritual source, to God, the enemies ready to devour first peter chapter 5 verse 8 says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks around about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour we're to wake up and strengthen those gifts hallelujah we're to wake up in verse 3 it says remember therefore how you have received and heard Hold fast and repent. Remember how you've received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Sadis is to remember how they first heard, how they first received, heard, hold fast and repent. Remember why? Because Satan never wants us to remember that God is good. He never wants us to remember the gospel. He never wants us to remember what God has done for us. He doesn't want us to remember, but yet we are called to remember what God has done for us. The word of God we first received and hold on to it. We are to remember because that word is inside of us. The word of God that you first you received, that you heard is inside of you. If you choose to remember it. When we remember the word of God, we can follow the Lord's commands, you see. That's why the devil wants you to forget about it. Don't waste time on it. Don't give it time. In fact, don't go and read that chapter again. Because he knows when you read it, something inside of you will be stirred up. The light of God will shine in your eyes and your heart. You begin to obey God. The text tells us that we are to hold fast. We are to obey. Once we've remembered, we are to obey. We are to hold fast. Holding fast means that 
we are in danger of losing it. We are in danger of losing that very thing that is about to die. We are in danger of losing our spiritual gifts. We are in danger of losing those things that God has given unto us if we don't hold on fast. How, are we, are we, how is it in danger? How are we in danger of losing it? Because it says here, hold on fast. If you feel holding on, you're holding on to something that's already falling off your hand. It's falling out of your hand because of too much business with the world. It's falling out of your hand because you've engaged in ungodly behavior. How is it falling out of your hand? Because you put the things of the world above the things of God. Oh, it's okay. You know, I can't do this this time. I can't join the choir. I can't start teaching young people because of work commitments. In fact, I don't have days off. Sundays, I can't come to church because I've got this new job. I'm very busy. The Lord is saying we are to hold fast because whatever we have, we are in danger of losing it. We are in danger of losing it. In fact, it says it's about to die. We are about to lose it. It's slipping out of our hands. We are to repent. Repent of our deadness, our coldness towards the things of God. The church of Sardis was supposed to repent of his apathy, his dryness, his deadness towards the things of God, and watchfulness. Turn away from that laziness. And begin to focus on the things of God. For someone here today, it's, for, it's just to die to self. You cannot die to self. It's, it's so hard. Every time you hang yourself on the cross, you nail yourself on the cross, you go back and pick it up. We are to die to self. Die to the world. Because Jesus went on the cross once and for all. He was nailed on the cross for you and I. When you received him, when you became born again, your old self was nailed to the cross with Jesus. But for some of us, we're constantly running to the cross and picking the old self back and, you know. We have to turn away from every form of evil. Love for the world. Some of us are so into hate. Division. We have to just open our eyes onto Facebook and see that there are some people spewing hate, and you think the devil spirit has truly entered on some people. Second Colossians chapter two, chapter two, verse six says, "Is as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, repenting, turning away from the things of the world." As you've received Christ, walk in the ways of Jesus. Do things as the Lord Jesus commands us to do. He's calling the church to remember, to hear, to hold on fast, to repent. He's calling on me and you to do the same. We are to walk in his ways. When we read his word, when we share his word to, words together, we are to do just that. We are to be doers of what Jesus is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He warns us that there will be a coming judgment. Therefore, if you will not watch, I'll come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I'll come upon you. He is going to come undercover. He's going to be stealthy, unexpected. He is just going to arrive when we are not aware. But the question is, are we going to be watching when he comes? Are we going to be holding on? Are we going to be ready? Are we going to be expectantly waiting for Jesus when he comes? Or are we going to be in that situation where everything that he's telling us here is already dead? We are not holding on. Instead of excitement, we're going to be sad. Like the, the virgins. We have to be watchful, expecting him to arrive any moment. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2 says, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. No one knows the hour when the Lord Jesus will come. But yet he's telling us here himself that we are to be watchful. We are to be found ready waiting for him to come. Hallelujah. 
in verse 4 he says you have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy the garments reveal their inward conditions of our heart a few in Sardis even in Sardis the text says even in this dead church they are those who have not defiled their garments and these people will be dressed in white they will walk with the Lord there are few even in Sardis. There are few even watching me now who have not defiled their garments, who are completely sold out to the things of God, who follow diligently the word of God, who leave the ways of Jesus, who follows in the ways of Christ. Those, their garments are not defiled and the Lord knows them by name and they will walk with him in paradise. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus knows those who are his, even in a dead church like Sardis. He says, even in Sardis, even in our local churches, there are those who have not defiled their garments. Their hearts are for Jesus Christ. Jesus knows them by name. He sees them. They are precious to him. Perhaps you're in a country where the, the gospel is not allowed, in a Muslim country where the word of God is not permitted. Jesus knows that you're there and he's here encouraging you. I know that you are there and your garment has not been defiled. So take heart. You will walk with him in paradise. Hallelujah. Only those with spotless garment will enter the kingdom of God. We are not capable of having a spotless garment of our own strength. Of our own power man's power not even if you kill a million people it will not take you to heaven no mattering that you do on earth will take you to the presence of god It's only through the blood of jesus christ yeshua hamashiach who shed his blood to save humanity from sin it's only through the blood of jesus if you do not know jesus christ as the way to heaven the only way to heaven Today can be that day that you can make him your Lord, that you can walk with him in paradise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. It says it's because they are worthy. The ones who hold on. Put their hope and trust in Jesus. What garment are you wearing today? Is it soiled? Or undefiled. There is hope. There is hope for those whose garments are undefiled or unsoiled. Because Jesus says you walk with him. There is hope for those who are living in sin. Who do not know Jesus. Who are wearing defiled garments. Jesus is saying I'm giving you a chance to repent. I'm giving you a chance to come to me as the only way. I'm the only one. It's only Jesus' blood that can make you clean. Nothing else can make you clean. Nothing else can take you to heaven. It doesn't matter how many people you sacrifice to your God. Only the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary for you can give you eternal life. If only you would believe. The garment that we will wear or what we are wearing now has eternal consequences. If your garment is soiled, know this. Jesus is saying, repent. Repent. Hallelujah. In verse 5, it says here, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garment, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and his angels. Overcomers will be clothed in white. Their names will not be blotted out. The cleanliness of their garment will be rewarded with the perfection of Jesus Christ's cleanliness. Their holiness here on earth will be rewarded with Jesus' purity and holiness. Every person will be rewarded accordingly. I love that it says it's the book of life, which means it's a register of those who are in churches now, those who are here on earth. A register of people's names being kept of those who are undefiled, whose garments are not soiled, who will be walking with the Lord. And their names are not going to be 
blotted out, wiped out of the book of life. You know, what breaks my heart is that even the ones whose names are blotted out, their names were there. How can I put this? Every name was in there. All names was in the book of life. But because of our weaknesses, our wrong choices, our own disobedience, our names was blotted out from the book of life. Our names all had a privilege of being announced in the presence of God and his angels. But because of our own choices, putting the earthly things before the things of God, our names was wiped out. Because of sin, our names was wiped out. Because of pornography, our names was wiped out. Because of hatred against somebody you don't even know, your name was wiped out of the book of life. What a sad day that will be for many millions, billions of people. What a sad day that will be to know that your name was once in the book of life. But it was blotted out because of foolish mistakes that we make here on earth. The foolish choices that we make. What a sad day that will be. I love that Jesus says, I'll confess their names before my father and his angels. Our names will be announced. I pray that our names, for anyone listening, that your name will be announced before God and his angels. The judge of all judges, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, will be announcing us before God the Father and the angels in heaven. Hallelujah, somebody. What a beautiful sight that will be. In glory, your name will be announced. Your arrival will be announced. What a, night, a wonderful day that will be. But we have to do what he's telling us to do here. Hold on to what we've heard. And repent. Repent of our evil ways. The book of Luke chapter 12 verse 8 to 9 says, I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. Are you sharing Jesus? Are you preaching the gospel to your brothers and sisters, to your friends? Or are you ashamed of Jesus? Have you shared a video telling people about Jesus? Or you've just decided it's not your job? Jesus is saying clearly, if you don't acknowledge him here on earth before other people, he will not also announce you. Today is that day, an opportunity to share Jesus Christ. Share the videos that someone else has preached, the message that has been given through someone else. Share it. It's not going to cost you anything. But it will bless you. It will bless you because it means that your name, Jesus, will acknowledge you too because you've acknowledged him here on earth in your sphere amongst your friends. Preach the gospel. You don't have to be a pastor to preach the gospel. Give somebody a booklet. That talks about Jesus. Buy somebody a Bible. Hallelujah. The judge of all judges will soon appear. And he will be judging each and every one accordingly. Are we going to be ready? Let us pray. Heavenly Father. We thank you for your word. We bless your name, Lord, for your word. May it change us, may it change us, Lord. I thank you that it's gone out in the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.